Hey guys, quick deal here. For those that think that I am paranoid, we're kind of always been a little bit more alert, especially when in Seattle. Here is one of my bigger fears. You have a really nice Sprinter van here, and some asshole decided to spray paint on the side of it. Although, this is a pretty nice looking van. And let me go to the other side real quick because there's kind of a neat feature in here. And you can see just some solar panels up there, a little extra storage and a max air fan, which is what we're gonna install on ours. But even wood burning stove, it looks like. That is something that I'd like to install on our rig, but the only downside is we just don't have much room. We could install it in the kitchen, but they kind of, they take up a lot of space. We can install it in the over cab, but again, same deal. So if you have any ideas working with our two slides for where we could put a, a wood burning stove, let us know. I'm very interesting. Looks like an old church bus. Well, even they have a little stove, stove pipe over there. That's cool. We're out here for a walk and it uh, sort of opened up on us here, unexpectedly. We do, however, have us a nice shelter, so hard to complain about that. I could live in that. I would 100% live in that. We have a lot of room in that party bus. And Interestingly, you can actually purchase them at auction when they're done with them. So that's kind of cool, the V60LF. Beauty. This is a pretty spicy house with a car to match though. That's, that is a good looking bug. <laughs> Here's a funny little uh, trailer called Cupcake. It's kind of cool. Reminds me a lot of our scamp, but that doesn't have a door, so I don't know how that works. It might just be a cargo trailer or something like that. We can't see the back, but uh, really nice owners too. All right, so I'm not sure how exactly to approach this subject because I'm sure this is going to be divisive, which if you haven't learned by now, I'm a little bit divisive. A lot of folks may not think a lot of things that I talk about are a big issue or they may think that I'm pretty darn paranoid. That's totally okay. I will admit like I am seen everywhere that I work as a has been a little bit off, a little bit weird, a little bit more paranoid than, than the folks that I work with and I'm, I'm okay with that. That's just who I am. So, you know, do with this information what you will. Uh, but something that I actually found kind of interesting was the fact that built into the Ford truck that this Ford Econoline, the E450 chassis, is something called Ford Pass. I saw it in a forum and, and I was wondering, I'm like, what is Ford Pass? I, I don't know. And I, so I Googled it, of course, and it came up and it said every Ford vehicle produced after I think it was 2020 is going to have Ford Pass. And I'm thinking, I'm like, well, that's weird. And it says every time on the dash that you start it up, it says information sharing enabled. And I'm like, well, that's weird. What, what is this? And as I'm looking it up, I'm thinking, okay, this this information like the location sharing and the tracking and diagnostics i'm like that doesn't that would apply to like a, a chassis cab like we have right wrong so today just for giggles i signed into the ford pass app thinking there's probably not too much to this right but there is there certainly is there is some interesting information so it does tell you like your tire psi your oil life your maintenance schedule if you get your service done at ford which we're not getting our maintenance done at ford <laughs> that's a little bit more than I'd like to spend. It also allows you to start your vehicle from anywhere, lock the doors, unlock the doors, honk the horn, and flash the lights, which is basically just a panic alarm. You can do that from anywhere. That's kind of cool, I, I would say, particularly if you get locked out. So kind of a, a neat feature. The weird part comes in when they have something called Journeys, which I believe uses your phone for the most part, but it, it tracks your journey and it tracks your exact location constantly. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm really not down with that. But there is somewhat of a way around this. So I just got to reading their privacy policy for the Ford Pass system. One of the most concerning things to me was the fact that they aren't extremely transparent with what they do with your data. They just say that they will collect and share this data as they please, basically. It's, they'll do who knows what with it. More importantly, it's very blatantly clear they actually sell this data to insurance companies. Depending on how you drive, how much you drive, where you're driving, <clears throat> the, the environments that you're driving in, and even how hard you brake or accelerate, your insurance company is going to get this information. You might argue that, well, I didn't sign into the Ford Pass. 
However, that telematics control unit is tied to your VIN number. Your VIN number, of course, is going to be registered with your insurance company. It's gonna be registered with the state that you are, of course, registered in. There's no getting around the fact that this unit is tied to you. That, to me, is just a little concerning, particularly because it's working whether you know about it or not. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. There are some benefits. There's also some downfalls. Working in IT as a system administrator, I have a pretty strong focus on, on information security. And while you might argue, yes, a phone is tracking you constantly, that's very true. However, I, I wanna limit my information footprint. I know what data my phone has. I can choose to turn my phone on and off. I can choose to leave it behind, but your vehicle is completely different. And of course, this isn't to mention that it's been proven time and time again that vehicles, especially now that they're just simply computers, can be hacked. Anything can be hacked. Your phone can be hacked, right? Uh, your, your wireless cameras can be hacked. Anything that connects to the internet can be hacked. I wanna minimize the footprint that my vehicle <laughs> has i'm really still in the infancy of my research phase when it comes to all of this let me show you where i'm at now i went ahead and i figured okay maybe i can find the control module and just simply unplug it that part i'm having a bit of a tough time with and i haven't given up but i figured okay well maybe the next thing i can do is just simply pull a fuse check this out so i went to the website and i started looking at all the fuses for this particular model and what I found was that Fuse 19 is actually what's in control of the telematics control unit. The weird thing is though, is that these guys actually use a three prong fuse. 19 and 20 are actually the same fuse. You can take one of the smaller fuses that is just an extra fuse and pop it in the place of number 20. Because if you simply pull that fuse, you will not be able to turn the vehicle over because the ignition is the same. The option is, of course, to simply pop the smaller fuse into number 20, leaving number 19 disconnected. It ensures that the ignition still works, but the TCU does no longer work. And I verified that by going to the app, checking to see if my location will update, and it will not. That just makes me feel a little tiny bit better. Arguably, you would say, well, but the GPS would be really good if somebody stole your motorhome. Absolutely. Except for the fact that I've got other tech in here that I can use to track the location of this rig. One way or another, we would figure out where this guy is and go ahead and pick it up. I'm not really worried about that function. So this might be something interesting for somebody if you kind of like to tinker a little bit and you don't really trust where your data is going. I think this is one small step toward just a little bit more privacy. Now, if you couldn't already tell without getting too political, I don't lean left and I don't lean right. I'm not a Republican and I'm definitely not a Democrat. If anything, I would consider myself much more of a libertarian, which if you haven't seen this already, it just means I prefer to be left alone. And if I'm not hurting anybody, and if you're not hurting anybody, you should be able to do what you want and be left to it. I just think that's a better policy. So this is one of those things where I like to be in control and I don't I don't think it's really cool to, to pay so much money and still not own your product. And I was reading online today Somebody had uh, somebody had mentioned uh, that almost any device over 500 bucks now, somebody else is really gonna own that device and they're working to make more money off of you. And I can't disagree with that. It's it's very sad, but <laughs> I can't disagree with that at all. But anyways, gotta clean up this whole rat's nest of a, of a deal here. I hope this does not come off like a super tinfoil hat kind of deal. And if this sort of stuff does not concern you, don't tinker with it at all. Absolutely. And at any point, you can still turn around and pop that fuse right back in there and everything goes right back to where it was. Hope this is uh, kind of interesting, guys. See you in the next one. Bye.